But let's take you now to this story, uh, an announcement uh, this morning by the president of Kenya, President uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, of the passing of the third president of Kenya, President Mwai Kibaka, uh, Kibaki, who uh, was uh, in uh, the head of state between 2002 and 2013. Let's now bring in Sarah Kimani. Sarah, a very good day to you. Thank you so much for talking to us. Can you confirm to us the passing of the former president? Yes, indeed. Uh, president Uhuru Kenyatta has announced uh, that uh, his predecessor, Mwai Kibaki, died yesterday on Thursday at about midday. And uh, President Kibaki was 90 at the time of his death. Now, he will be remembered for having served uh, the country as uh, president between 2002 uh, and 2013. He succeeded uh, President Moi, who was the second president of the Republic of Kenya. And uh, Moi had served the country uh, for 24 years. So uh, Kibaki uh, took over as the first opposition uh, presidential candidate uh, to win an election in the country. And he will also be credited for having uh, spurred economic development in the country at a time when uh, many people... Uh, Moi had led for 24 years, and many felt that uh, his leadership had been dictatorial. So Akibaki uh, took over. Some uh, he will be credited for having also uh, steered the country towards a new constitution, a new infrastructural development. But also, it is during his time that the country faced its darkest moment, uh, the post-election violence, in which 1,500 people lost their lives. It has been said that uh, his political years were untainted and that he uh, was the reason for Kenya's rapid economic growth uh, as a result of uh, uh, the structural work that he put in place in his 10 years at the helm. Uh, are you in agreement? Yes, a lot of people will say that because uh, development had stalled during the 24 years of uh, uh, President Moy's rule, uh, it was a one-party rule which was uh, uh, tainted by corruption, tainted by a, dictator, a dictatorial iron twisted regime. And so Kibaki was seen as a breath of fresh air. Uh, when he took over, he was able to improve infrastructure, uh, be able to open up uh, the economy. A lot of Kenyans were able now to access financial services. And so for that, a lot of people were also able to access loans, which had become inaccessible to uh, what we call the common man. And so for that, he will be credited for having improved the economy. And indeed, by the time uh, he was leaving power, Kenya had almost stopped uh, borrowing from the Bretton Woods Institution. Sarah, at a time like this, we're thinking of condolences to his family. We will remember that moment when his wife, Lucy Kibaki, stood in front of parliamentarians and uh, pleaded with him to make it public that he's a one-woman man. How is the Kibaki family at this time? Yes, indeed. Uh, while he may have uh, performed very well uh, on his work as a leader, sometimes uh, his family or uh, his private life did not match what he was able to do uh, on the on the public. For example, uh, as you said, his wife one time uh, forced him to call a press conference to indicate that he was uh, the, he was a one man. Uh, he had only one wife, uh, but also uh, Lucy Kibaki is remembered for having uh, stormed a newsroom uh, saying that uh, the, his her family uh, was being uh, harassed by the media, that uh, the media had been unfair to uh, his legacy. But these are just some of the uh, things that uh, will overshadow his leadership. Probably uh, more uh, that people remember him for is having been uh, in power when the country faced even a darker moment, uh, the post-election violence. Other than that, uh, by the way, uh, he lost his wife uh, two years ago, so he's been widowed for two years. So many people will probably overlook uh, that legacy and maybe uh, talk more of what he did as a leader, and especially because Kenya is now facing another election in August this year. Sarah, just take us into the content of that announcement uh, by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Indeed. 
indeed, uh, President Kenyatta has sent what is called a presidential uh, proclamation. In meat, he describes uh, uh, President uh, Kibaki saying that he was a leader, uh, a leading figure in uh, post-independence Kenya. Uh, he talks to he about his uh, uh, activities during the fight for multipartism in the country. He talks to about when he was sworn in on the 30th of December 2002, but he further states that uh, the country will miss him uh, for his dedication and love of the country. And so he says, now the country is going to go into national mourning. Flags are going to fly at half mast until he is buried. He does not say uh, when that will happen, but he says that uh, a state funeral will be held in one of President Kibaki. He doesn't say how, how, when that will happen, but he has said that now the country will go into mourning. Uh, the most interesting thing that maybe I should mention is that President Kibaki is the godfather, uh, the Christian godfather in church of uh, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. The two families, the Kenyatas and the Kibaki, were great family friends, and so uh, Kenyatta will also have this as a personal loss to him, uh, and uh, it, it is going to, of course, reflect on him uh, during this time. Sarah, at 90 years old, the former president is not only uh, a former president, he's also an elder in Kenyan society. What's the feeling on the ground uh, following the announcement by President Kenyatta? I think it will be a sense of shock and deep loss uh, because people have had mixed feelings about uh, the leadership of President uh, Kenyatta uh, and his deputy, uh, William Ruto. They have been seen to pass a lot in public. And so a lot of people have been saying uh, they miss President Kenyatta's leadership. Interestingly, uh, Kibaki, I mean, they miss President Kibaki's leadership. Interestingly, uh, President Kibaki, uh, once he retired, he took a back seat from the public scene. He took a back seat from the country's politics and has not been seen uh, to talk about uh, the ongoings in the political scene. So it will be uh, a moment of missing him, especially now that the country is going to an election. Many keep saying that the country is yet to get a leader like President Kibaki. And they will be looking to see uh, whoever succeeds President Kenyatta, whether they can take the country back in terms of leadership and in terms of the quality of service that he offered the country to the days of President Kibaki. Sarah, even while late President Kibaki was in power, there was always speculation about the status of his health. Is this the reason why he took a backseat or are there other reasons? Yes, indeed. Uh, President Kibaki suffered a stroke just before uh, he took over leadership. Remember, he had an accident as the country uh, was going to that election of 2002. And uh, from that accident, he suffered a stroke. He was treated uh, in the UK and he came to the country to uh, take over leadership on a wheelchair, uh, something that had not been seen in the region uh, with the, the then Prime Minister Raila Odinga hadn't taken a key role in the campaign uh, for President Kenyatta. And fortunately, uh, for President Kibaki, unfortunately, his deputy then, uh, Michael Kijana Wamalwa, also passed on uh, while in office. And so uh, people have been speculating about his, his health. Uh, we are, last year, uh, he took ill and he was admitted at the same time when President Magufuli was unwell, uh, President Kibaki was admitted in hospital here in the country. He has undergone uh, several uh, visits there in South Africa for treatment. And so all these things have been at the back of minds of many Kenyans. And so it will not really come as a surprise that he has passed on, although many people would have wanted him to leave. But he's also been ailing for some time and his age also. At 90, a lot of people will see this as a blessing. Just in terms of his continental involvement and how the continent should be remembering this former Kenyan president. They will remember him as a person who uh, steered the, the, the country uh, towards peace and mediation, especially uh, in South Sudan and also the Democratic Republic of Congo. At the time when President Kibaki was president is when uh, South Sudan attained its independence, and he was key in ensuring that South Sudan attained its independence, but also attained peace. And so he pushed and uh, had uh, his 
our Vice President Ken Salonzo Msioka as an ambassador to South Sudan, as a peace envoy to South Sudan for the longest. Uh, before that, he had uh, uh, Lazarus Sumbeyu, a former uh, Major General in the Army, also steering the country towards uh, attaining uh, independence, but also peace. Sarah, thank you so much for giving us this update. And of course, we'll be watching to see events leading up uh, to that end of the morning period. And of course, resulting in finally in the burial of former Kenyan president, uh, Mwai Kibaki, an announcement by the Kenyan, the current Kenyan president at the moment uh, that uh, the former president has passed away this morning.